people often ask me about uh, the Boeing, which uh, of course is probably the most vital ingredient of all when you come to play the violin or the fiddle. Um, so I'll tell you a few things about my approach to Boeing. Um, if ever you've watched Irish fiddlers, of course, you'll notice they all seem to be doing their own thing. Uh, there's no set uh, instruction manual for Irish Boeing. Uh, every player does have his own individual way of getting through the tunes. Um, but there, there are some kind of common traits. Um, and I'll try to uh, bring a few of those to the fore so you can uh, pick up on them. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I hold the bow very lightly. Um, I, you know, this, this area here is known as the grip. And it's a word I really shy away from because I don't think grip has anything to do with playing the fiddle. Uh, in my mind, it's the fiddle that's holding the bow, not my hand. I just uh, bring the bow to the fiddle and then I let it go and it's resting on the fiddle and the fiddle's holding it up, not my hand at all. Right now I'm holding the bow. But that's not how I play. When I let go of the bow and let the fiddle hold it, that's how I am when I'm playing. So it's the fiddle that's bearing the weight of the bow, not my hand, like, it, like now. That's not my playing position. That's my playing position. So having said that, The obvious things are to keep the bow in the right place, which is halfway between the bridge and the top of the fingerboard, and try to keep it straight all the way up. If you describe an arc, you're gonna have a pretty uneven tone. I view the bow as a tone maker much more than a rhythm maker. Uh, I don't think about the bow in terms of rhythm at all, really. Uh, its, its main job is to play, is to make the tone. Uh, and it makes that tone by stroking the string. The word stroke is the perfect word. Just like grip, I find a kind of an objectionable word because it doesn't seem to fit the whole concept of using the bow. Likewise, I find the word stroke to be the perfect word. That's what you do with the string. You stroke the string in order to make it vibrate. And the tool that we use to stroke the string is the bow. So having said all that now, when it comes to playing rails, I do have um, a fairly common uh, habit, a fa or a fa uh, common to me. Um, most tunes that I, most reels that I play, uh, somewhere in there, you'll find that I play three notes in an up bow three notes in a down bow and two detached. Um, for me, that's a very common move. Um, now, if we divide the, the measures up into the eight eighth notes or eight quavers, um, I'd play the first three in an up bow. Sometimes that might mean I'm playing a long note and a short one or one dotted long note. If it was a dotted note, that would count as the three notes. Um, if it was a, a crotchet, uh, a quarter note uh, and an eighth note, that would count as the three. So we'll say in the mountain road, um, I've got a, a quarter note to start and then an eighth note A. So that would be my initial up stroke, my three up, and then three down. And then two detached. Uh, 
And that's a move I use a lot. If we take uh, the morning dew, now this starts on a dotted note. I've got the dotted note, so that would be my three up, and then three down. The next three notes are B, B, A, and I distinguish the second B by, by using a grace note. So there you have my three up, three down, and then two detached. Another example might be the Sligo Maid. That phrase there. So the three up, three down, two detached. Same thing again. Three up, three down, Two detached. So that's a move I use a lot. It's slightly odd for a few reasons. Um, it starts with an up bow. Now the rule of thumb is down bow for a down beat. The first beat is your down beat. But I'm playing it with an up bow. So right away we've done something a little unusual. Um, if we divide the notes up into the eight notes, that first stroke of the three notes covers the beats one and two. So we're playing one and two with the first stroke. The second stroke is and three and. Now in a four four tune, the principal beats are on the one and the three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You emphasize the one, and then you emphasize the three. <clears throat> Not quite as much as the one, <clears throat> but it definitely has an emphasis. That's where you would tap your foot, is on the, usually, on the one and the three. Now, if you want to be clever, you can tap on the off beats, but we're trying to keep things normal here, so... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's how you'd normally tap your foot. And here, with the bow, that beat, that second beat, the, the three, one, two, three, um, is coming in the middle of the stroke. Now, it's normal to have a new stroke to emphasise the beat. So our first principal beat, the one beat, we're using an up bow instead of a down. Our second principal beat, beat number three, uh, it's coming in the middle of the stroke. It, it doesn't have its own separate uh, bow stroke, which is kind of unusual. Um, and then we've got those two notes hanging over at the end. Three up, three down is six, and there are two left, and they're detached. It's it's not very intuitive, you know. It, it, it it's counterintuitive. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, it's a, it's a bit like that thing of uh, you know rubbing your stomach and patting your head. You seem to be going against the what is appears to be the natural rhythm of the tune. Yet, if you can master this idea, you'll find it really does make the tune float and come alive. Uh, and it, it it takes away the doggedness that you sometimes hear uh, from players who aren't that familiar with Irish music. Um, they 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 manage to get hold of the notes, but they they because they're not that familiar with the music, they're not sure how to make them move properly. They rely on the orthodox rules of thumb that you would pick up when you're learning most kinds of music. But unfortunately, they don't apply to the Irish tunes. So the written music isn't a lot of help. Um, and this same device I use a lot for so many of these string crossing passages that you hear a lot in Irish music. 
it's often the case where you have a note on one string, then you go to another string for another note, then you come back to that original note, you go back to the other string for yet a third note, and then back to the original note. And you're hopping back and forth. And usually the note that you come back to on the lower string is the same one each time. We'll say an F sharp. And the one on the top, uh, the higher string, is what is moving. An example would be, again, the, the mountain road. We have an F sharp and then an A and back to F sharp. And then a B, back to F sharp. And then another A, back to F sharp. Um, but I wouldn't separate them out that way. Um, I see the bottom note, the F sharp, more like a drone note. It never quite goes away. I don't leave that F sharp. And then I bring in the A, and then I bring in the B, and then I bring in the A again. So really I'm playing, and on top of that I've got But in between each note, you hear the F sharp. And if you listen closely alongside those higher notes, you'll hear the F sharp because the F sharp never actually goes away. So it should really be written F sharp, F sharp and A, F sharp, F sharp and B, F sharp, uh, rather than F sharp A, F sharp B. It's, they're not separate notes. It's like a group of notes coming together to make a word, like letters combined to make a word. We're not spelling out the letters, we're pronouncing the word. This group of notes makes a certain noise, and the noise is... So um, that bowing grouping I find very useful for that kind of string crossing thing as well. And a, a, a very common error, because those top notes tend to stick out, you often hear players emphasising them. Whereas the more experienced Irish player tends to de-emphasise them. We focus on maintaining that F sharp and we gently bring in those upper notes. Just brushing the string. If I played it any lighter, I'd actually miss the string, which I do sometimes, in fact. So those string crossing moments, you'll hear a lot in Irish music. Um, and try and remember don't emphasize the top notes. Just, it's almost like you lean over and brush the string gently, but you keep your bow on the original string, which is usually the lower one. Once in a while, you'll have a similar kind of a phrase, and it, it's, the, it's the top string that stays put, and the, the bottom notes are the ones that, moving, uh, that are moving. Something like... Uh, So I'm playing a B, and then underneath it. So I'm uh, reversing the process, but it's the same idea. I hang on to the B, and then instead of separating the E as its own note, I include it with the B instead of they're not separated like that they're included with the B it's 
So you hear the B never actually goes away. Um, that happens a lot, but it's, uh, it's not as common as having the bottom note act as the drone and to have the top notes moving. I don't leave the E, the e note. There's the three down. And then the two detached. And again, I'm playing a chord, E and B, before I go back to the E. So you'll hear that sprinkled all over these Irish tunes, and that's how I go about uh, playing that kind of passage. So uh, maybe you'll find that helpful when you get to those parts of the tune.